In this video, we will practice assigning oxidation numbers based on electron configuration. So we're going to follow the rules that were listed in module 8.3, and let's give it a go. So what should we practice with first? I have decided we are going to start with lead to get the lead out. Um, so the very first thing that we want to do is identify the noble gas that precedes it. And you'll notice xenon is our noble gas that precedes it. So we write that in brackets. And where do we go next? We go from xenon, we go over to our 6s and place two electrons in that. Then we jump down from the 6s, well, there's the 5d1, but then we go to the 4f, and the 4f block is completely filled. So we place 14 electrons in the 4f. And then we're going to go back to the 5d, and it's going to be the 5d10. In this video, we are going to assign oxidation numbers based on electron configuration. So we will follow the rules that were provided to you in module 8.3. And um, the first one we're gonna practice with is lead. To get the lead out, bad joke, sorry. All right, so here we go. Um, what noble gas precedes lead is the first question I ask myself. And I circle it, it's xenon. So we get to write that first in brackets. All right, and then um, after xenon, we go down to the energy level that the uh, element is found in. So we're in the 6s uh, period, so the 6s is the next to be filled, so 6s2. Then we go down from, we have a 5d1, and then it goes down and fills the 4f. So we're not going to bother writing that 5d1 first, we're just going to do 4f14, and then do our 5d10. And after that, we go to uh, the 6p, and there's two electrons in the 6p. So we write 6p2. All right, so what are the rules? We have to remove or add from the highest energy level. So our highest energy level is 6. So the next rule says that if you have the same n, you remove or add from the highest l. And the highest L is P because S, when we're in the same energy level, S is less than P, is less than D, is less than F, as long as we're in the same energy level, which in this case is 6. So P wins. So we take two electrons from the P block because there's two there. We pull them both. Next up, we can take from the 6S. So we take two more. So that's a total of four. So the number of oxidation numbers that we could have, we could have a situation where you lose just two electrons and have um, lead that has a plus two for an oxidation number, or it could lose a total of four. Remember, to form a plus four, it takes a lot more energy because for every electron you take, it is energy to remove it. All right, so the next up, let's try another one. So after lead, how about bromine? So bromine, here we go. Bromine it is. The element that comes before bromine, or the noble gas specifically, that comes before it is argon. So we write that in brackets. Then we go back to the energy level, the period that it's in, which is the four, fourth energy level for the 4s fills next, 4s2. We go back in energy level to do the d block. So we do 3d10. And then we are back to the 4p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we put five electrons in the 4p. All right, so if we are starting with oxidation numbers that are positive first, we can take from the 4p. So it could be a plus 5. And then it could be a plus 7. But guess what? We know that we don't have oxidation numbers higher than plus 7. Um, so we're going to use plus 5 could be a plus five. And then remember, this is a non-metal, so it can have negative oxidation numbers. So if you're at a 4p and it's a five, if you give it one more electron, it would make it a filled 4p. So it can also have an oxidation number of minus one. So those are the two oxidation numbers for bromine. All right, let's try another one. Okay, it's fun, isn't it? Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Okay, so I'm going to do phosphorus next. So phosphorus, it's kind of a nice one. Right before phosphorus, what noble gas comes ahead of it? 
you see it, it's neon. So we get to write neon in brackets. Bam. All right, then we go down to the 3s. So we put two electrons in the 3s, and then we get to put three electrons in the 3p. All right, so if we want to form positive oxidation numbers, third energy level is the same for both the s and the p. We take from the p first, so it can be a plus three. We could pull from the s, that would make a plus five, and that would be it. Now, remember, phosphorus is a nonmetal, so that means it could have a negative oxidation number. A negative oxidation number would add three to its 3p, so we could have a minus three. All right, and that's phosphorus. All right, here we go, one more. Let's try indium. Okay, so indium is where, where, where? It's right here, number 49. So what comes ahead of it? We have the noble gas krypton, so KR. Oops, KR. Now, we go down to the five, and we have two electrons in it, so we have a 5S that has two electrons in it. Then we go to the D block. It's completely filled. 4D10. And now we're back to a 5P1. All right. First oxidation number is plus one. Right here it is. Boom. It gets taken away. The next two that we take away is a plus three. Two plus one, plus three. And that's it. Uh, indium is a metal. Can't have negative charges. And we can't have anything higher, so we're not going to take from our filled 4D10. So we've only got two possible oxidation numbers, plus one and plus three. All right, you guys, good luck. The rest is for you to practice and have fun with.